Well, we can have a Class now. I'm not calling you, ma'am. Taking now, sir. Now, sir, we can start. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Now can we? Hello. Your voice I cannot hear at all. Uh, we can start now, sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So today I'll just uh, complete this uh, session of uh, pediatric trauma online fellowship, and I'm going to talk today to you about Montage affected dislocations. And uh, that was one topic which was remaining to be completed. And uh, we'll do it today. So this is a very interesting uh, fracture in a child. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. We can okay. see. Okay. You can see. Okay. So the Montagia fracture dislocation. Uh, typically, in our OPD, we usually get children with this kind of an X-ray our technician or our uh, X-ray person has taken this X-ray, a child had a fall, and you get this kind of an X-ray. And immediate thought that comes to your mind is that, oh, this child has a green seat fracture of the other. Okay, the child is painful, no further X-rays are done. But what is missed is a proper dead lateral elbow X-ray, where you can see that the radial head is lying anterior to the uh, the distal epiphysis uh, of the capital. So please remember the commonest error in Montagia, fresh Montagia, is missing the lesion. And this lesion will not be missed if you understand that whenever you see an ulnar fracture, the first thing that you should do is look at the radial head. And when you not only look at the radial head, you have to draw two lines. The first is the alnar bow and the bobarax line. Bobarax line is a line which is drawn around the subcutaneous border of the alnar from the olecranon downwards. And in 85% of children, the line will be in complete contact with the subcutaneous border of the alnar. That is called the bobarax line, which defines the alnar bow. If there is a gap between the dorsal cortex of the ulna in the mid shaft anywhere, then the Mubarak's line is broken and you are very likely to be looking at a Montagia or a Montagia variant with a plastic deformation. And the second line that you need to draw is the transcapitular line. Again, in the transcapitular line, about 90% of the cases in children, when you draw a line along the radial shaft, passing through the center of the radial head, it has to intersect the center of the capitulum in any X-ray. So it is not that your X-ray view, if it is oblique or lateral or AP, in any view, AP lateral, oblique, flexion, extension, your center of the capitulum and the center of the radial head to the shaft should be in one line. If it is not, you should be very, very wary. So always evaluate two things. What is the alar bow by drawing the Mubarak line? That is the yellow line shown here. And what is the transcapitular line doing? As you can see here, the alar bow is disturbed and the transcapitular line is passing in front of the capitulum. This tells me that the radial head is dislocated. So you should understand that the ligamentous stability of the radial head is not only the annular ligament, it is also pull of the biceps and interosseous membrane, which is binding the radius and the ulna together. So the stability depends on a lot of other soft tissue structures in addition to the bony alignment. 
So the original description of Montegia lesion, which was described in 1814, is he described the mechanism where the type of injury he said is either a direct blow or Ivan said that this is a hyperpronation injury. Okay, so the mechanism of injury which Montegia proposed was a direct blow, which causes an anterior angulation and dislocation. But subsequently, in 1949, Ivan said that the forearm gets hyperpronated, which causes the ulna to crack, and then the radial head is pulled out. So that is the fall on outstretched hand. And Tompkins thought it is just the opposite. He said sometimes it's a hyperextension injury, but this is where you will get the radial head dislocated because of the pull of the biceps. After the ulna breaks, okay. So there are various theories which I described: direct blow, hyperpronation, or the hyperextension injury. And it was in 1950 that Bado gave us our classification, which we are using. Even in adults, the same classification is used. Type one is where you have an anterior angulation with anterior dislocation. Type two is where there is a posterior angulation with a posterior dislocation. Type three is a lateral angulation dislocation, which is usually a Hume's variant or a very proximal ulna fracture, and type four where you have both bone fracture with a radial head dislocation. Now these are the four types described by Bado, and there are some Montegia equivalents where you can have an isolated radial head dislocation, a radial neck fracture instead of a radial head dislocation, or with a dislocation. Or you can have isolated radial neck fracture dislocation or a combination with dislocation. So there are a lot of variants depending on the amount of forces acting on the proximal ulna and radius. Typically, 60% of adult and children will have a type one injury, and the type one injuries are not very difficult to diagnose provided you take a proper lateral X-ray and draw the lines. As you can see. Only in an AP you might miss it, and you think it's just a glissy fracture of the ulna. But like I said, whenever you see an ulna fracture, forget the ulna fracture, which is obvious. Always look at the radial head and draw the line. In your mind, draw the line. That is very important. The treatment protocol is essentially conservative, and the treatment you will be successful about ninety percent of the times if you do a good close reduction. It is not necessary to do surgery on a Montegia fresh fracture. Your attention to technique has to be important, and always when you are giving traction, the first thing you should do is, with a little traction, push the radial head back into position. Once the radial head is back into position, flex the elbow more than 90 degrees in type one so that. The capital of itself acts like a buttress against which the radial head is stabilized, and the ulna can heal in any position. There will be not a problem. So typically, this is what you do: with a little traction, you push the radial radius back in and straighten out the ulna. Even if the ulna has to be hyperangulated, it's fine as long as the radial head lies where it belongs. The ulna fracture will always heal. But your elbow flexion has to be more than 90 when you give your slab or your cast. Now, if acute flexion causes a circulatory embarrassment, then you might be justified in stabilizing the ulna with a nail or some sort of a implant. Up to 15 to 20 degrees of ulna angulation is totally acceptable. So, like I said, hyper flexion. Make sure that the radial head is in. And it is always stabilized when it is more than fixed, that's ninety degrees edge. And then you can either mold and give a well molded slab like this, or even a cast. I prefer cast all the time. And flexion should be done to restore the radial head and mold for angulation correction and length. So this is how your X-ray should look in AP and lateral. Both the radial head should be at the center of the capsule. And that is what you should look for. You need not worry about how the ulna looks. What are the indications for surgery? Now, surgery is needed only if you do not get the radial head in. Failure to achieve radial head reduction and 
on failure to reduce or maintain the allah reduction allah reduction comes secondary if the allah is angulated it doesn't matter as long as the radial head is back at the position now this is an example this is a very recent case that i did that is why i highlighted this you can see this is a type 2 i was just preparing these slides before our talk started and this is how i approach it you can see this this is a type 3 plateau where you have a lateral dislocation you can see that the radial head is not lined up to the center of the capitulum and there is a lateral angulation now these fractures are extremely difficult to control especially after the reduction so what we did was first as you can see here from here go down you can see my thumb on the radial head the head is pretty large here what you see is ossific nucleus and then with acute angulation with traction i push the radial head back in you can see the head has reduced it's in a better position but this is still not looking center to center you don't know whether this is correctly reduced so what you do is an arthrogram and the arthrogram what does it reveal that there is eccentric ossification which is why i was saying sometimes the ossific nucleus of the radial head may not be dead center and you may get a wrong impression that the head is not reduced so an arthrogram will help you can see that you can see that properly yeah. you can see nicely the capitulum and the radial head now seated across each other center to center However, the ossific nucleus on the radial end looks a little off. Okay, so it's good idea to always get an arthrogram to confirm your reduction. And now, once I have done for my reduction, that proximal allah was too small for me to hold the stenoplaster. So what I did was a percutaneous. I used the two and a half mm on a T handle, and I put it in the into the allah to keep it aligned and straight. Thus, percutaneous. So we just pass the rod or a two mm cable into the alarm and just push it in and maintain the reduction. And now you can see the alarm is straight, and you can see nicely the radial head well located under the center of the capsule. So this is a very nice way of demonstrating and showing you uh, the arthrography and the radius close reduction. Now this same technique you can use in any kind of project. Sir, audio is not clear. Sir, type one or type two or type three, but type three is the most difficult. Type one can be reduced very easily. Sir, audio is not clear. Hearing, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Audio is not clear. Hello. We are unable to hear. Hello. I can't hear you. Some disturbance is coming. Hello. Hello. Audio is not clear, no, sir. Not, we are not able to hear. Hello. What is the problem? I can't hear you. Hello. Hello, is there any me? There is some sort of TV. Hello. Ashok sir, hello, hello, hello Sandeep sir, hello, 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 hello Sandeep sir, hello. Yes.
Uh, Sandeep sir will uh, rejoin. Please wait. Hello, can you hear me, Maharshi? No. Yes, sir. It's, it's much better. Okay. Is background something? Somebody's uh, mic is on. Yo. Hello, can can you hear me better now? Yes, yes. Okay. So where did we miss our talk? So just a couple of slides. Hello. I think the from the classification is... types. Can you see the screen? Uh, you have to give, uh, go a few slides back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. okay. I'll, I'll just go back. Okay, we Please were start. at Montage. Ma, we were at Montage. Yeah. Huh. Can you see this? I've... Yeah. So, Bado, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, clearly. Okay, okay. I'll start again here. So, Bado classification. The Bado's classification actually was given for both adults as well as children, in which the type 1 is where there is anterior dislocation with anterior angulation. Type 2 is with a direct blow and acute flexion injury where you have a posterior dislocation with a posterior angulation of the Allah. The type 3 is where there is a lateral subluxation or dislocation. Type 4 is where you have a fracture of radius and ulna along with the dislocation. And then there are Montagia equivalents where you can have just a radial head dislocation or a fracture neck with a radial head dislocation or isolated fracture neck dislocation or a combination with dislocation. So these are all equivalents or variants where the four higher. Now 60% of the adults and children with Montagia fractures, as I said, the common problem is missing the dislocation. And whenever you see an ulnar green stick fracture, you must look at the radial head to make sure and draw the lines, the ulnar bow and the transcapital. And the treatment protocol is essentially conservative. And conservative treatment depends on if you pay attention to the technique and put the radial head back in. You don't have to worry too much of the ulna because once the radial head is pushed back to the correct position and you flex the elbow more than 90 degrees, right? So if the elbow is flexed more than 90 degrees, the capitulum will act like a buttress and it will prevent the radial head from slipping out and it will pull the ulna to length automatically. Up to 15 degrees of angulation is acceptable. So this is how you do it. You give a little traction under anesthesia. Make sure that you are pushing the radius back in. Simultaneously, the ulna can be hyperflexed in a type 1 montagia. And after, about 20 degrees of angulation can be accepted as long as the radial head remains in. Right? So this is how it should be tackled so that there is no problem with re-dislocation of the radial head, which is very, very important. And then you give a cast. So that is how it should be done. The radial head has to be pushed back in. Alna can be angulated more and either a well-molded slab or a cast. I prefer to give cast. And that is how you maintain that reduction and it should do absolutely well. So flexion to restore to the radial head and mold for ulnar length angulation and correction. Take an X-ray, make sure that the center of the radial head and the center of the capitulum are in one line. So that is what is important. When do you do surgery? Surgery is essentially if you do not get radial head reduction, or you are not able to maintain the ulnar reduction 
and it is unstable and it is slipping all the time. So this is just a case example which I did last week, which I just wanted to show you how you can approach these cases. So you can see here that this is a type 3 Montagia. Yeah? You can see very proximal ulnar fracture and the radial head is lying outside. You can see that capitulum and radial head are not aligned. And this is a type 3 injury. Now, this is one of the most tricky uh, Montagia variants to treat because it is difficult to control the proximal ulna. So, what you do, you can see here in the slide, uh, the second picture, my thumb is on the radial head and I'm pushing the radial head in and I'm going to correct that angle ulnar angulation. After doing that, in the third picture up here, you can see that this looks aligned, but the radial ossific nucleus is not perfectly in center with the lateral condyle. Now, what you have to do is, when you do an arthrogram, I put a little die. When I put the die, you can see that the radial head and the lateral condyle congruity is well maintained. What this tells you is that sometimes the ossific nucleus of the radial head may not be exactly centric. If it is eccentric, you might misjudge it as malreduction or unreduced. So doing an arthrogram will always help. You can see how nicely, perfectly this is reduced. Now this is the reduction picture. The proximal ulna is too short for me to maintain the reduction in a plaster and it may tend to drift out or slip out laterally. So I used a 2 mm K wire on a T handle and percutaneously we passed it like an intramedullary rod into the ulna and corrected the ulnar angulation. And you can see that how nicely just with close maneuvering, the whole picture now looks perfect. This is straight. This is well reduced. And then a cast was given for three weeks. And in three weeks time, when it healed, we took out the K wire in the OPD and started mobilization. So this is an easy way, but remember an arthrogram helps you determine whether the radial head is well reduced or the radial head is still subluxated. Again, arthrography will be very, very useful for you. If you need to do surgery, you may need to use a Boyd's approach and go between the intervals of Anconius and tensor and then reduce the radial head and after the obstacles are removed and repair is done if required. And this should be focused on reducing the radial head. Ulnar fracture can be then again close reduced and an intramedullary K wire or a rod only if unstable may be used. As you can just do a radial head relocation perfectly and just give a cast that is good enough. All right. So this is an example where open reduction with a K wire has been done, but you can manage with a closed reduction. Let's go to the late Montagia because in our country, we have a lot of delayed cases. And like I said, the commonest problem with Montagia is missing the fracture. So what do you do with the late, late, late Montagia? And the questions that we need to answer here are, how early can we treat it? How late should we treat it? Should we leave it alone? Does the radial head relocate spontaneously? Should we transfix the radiocapitular joint? Is a ligament reconstruction needed? And what are complications of surgery? So this is again an example of a forearm fracture, which was thought to be just an ulnar green stick fracture and was treated just with a cast. And he ended up like this. Okay, so it's very, very critical for you to judge with the ulnar bow and the radial, radio capitular line, whether the radial head is in or out because you are more often likely to end up with a bad situation if you don't pick it up very early. Most, most of the adult orthopods usually think that since function is good, leave it alone, patient will be functionally okay, doesn't matter. Uh, whether you should operate now before the damage increases or surgery should never be done because it causes more damage or operate when the child is fully grown at maturity. That is some of the thought process that are commonly told. So this is an example of a 24 year old gentleman who came to my OPD with a valgus instability because of a old unreduced Montagia. 
so for all those of you who think that you can leave it alone leaving alone uh, unreduced montage is not a very good idea because eventually the medial collateral gets stretched out and the patient ends up with pain along the medial border with ulnar neuritis as well as they get a weak forearm they can't lift heavy weights and a valgus instability which is very difficult to treat once the collateral stretches and over years the anatomy of the distal humerus changes so much that you can see the indentation in the lower humerus because of the head pressing into the uh, proximal humerus and creating eventual pain and arthritis so if left untreated you will end up with valgus instability and a weak elbow so it's always important to treat a neglected montagia why do you treat it to prevent the valgus instability to prevent the block to movements especially in flexion and eventual pain and arthritis and this has been published by kalamchi look at this paper the long term outcomes of missed montagia this is a japanese paper and what they concluded after their study was that if you need to treat a missed montagia if the child is less than 12 and the neglected injury is less than 3 years after the injury you can expect a reasonably good outcome what it means is that older children and more than 3 years of neglect where the head shape changes and causes a lot of degeneration and cartilage wear are no, not good candidates and you may have to rethink your plan of trying to do an open reduction and reconstruction now this is an example of a 12 year old female which was treated with closed reduction and above elbow plaster after 2 weeks you can see that the radial head is not in correct position and this is lying outside right 6 weeks after injury again the same situation so spontaneously radial head is not going to go in what are the options the commonest option is a ulnar flexion distraction osteotomy the approach can be either a different approach for radius and ulna so some people have attempted in very fresh injuries like you have a 6 or 8 week old fracture dislocation which you have diagnosed after about say 6 to 8 weeks of neglect come to you late no myositis simply doing an ulnar osteotomy and close reduction for the radius can also work so this is an example where the surgeon put they made an osteotomy they put a couple of kvas and did a flex flexion with a some distraction and the radial head reduced on its own so with traction and close reduction early neglected fractures can be treated and an open reduction of the radial head was not required the ulnar osteotomies various osteotomies have been described with or without fixation by kalamchi by hirayama and our own dr s d mehta from ghatkopur has also published in rockwood his osteotomy of an oblique nature has been described and they have done an open reduction and just a flexion distraction osteotomy and left it at that without even fixation this is our case where you did a angulation distraction osteotomy fixed it with a plate radial head got reduced and that is a follow up at one month where you can see the radial head is well maintained and the restoration of function okay and this is a two year follow up where the radial head is nicely reduced and you have an excellent function over a period of time the second option is where the radial head does not reduce if it does not reduce you will have to use either a posterior voids or a dead lateral approach and you need to do an open reduction and clearance of the joint very often you might find remnants of the torn ligament annular ligament as well as fibrosis in the radio capitular joint which needs to be cleared and after it is cleared you can bring the radial head back into position as you can see here this on your right hand side is the capitulum this is the radial head here and this after clearance has been brought back and you can see in flexion now this is lying against the capitulum then you have to check the stability in flexion extension and obviously you have to do an flexion 
angulation distraction osteotomy so that you remain in position the third question that you need to ask is is an annular ligament reconstruction required there are two methods described one is the bell toss which uses the central slip of the triceps or the lloyd roberts which uses the lateral slip of the triceps so through the same incision you can harvest the triceps fascia and leaving it attached at the proximal ulna you loop it around and tie it back onto itself or use a suture anchor to give additional stability but this is needed only in about 20% cases most of the times an angulation distraction osteotomy is adequate and doing a ligamentous reconstruction is usually not required but this is just to show you this is how the triceps fascia is there and after reduction we have looped it around the radial neck and tied it back to itself to give a check rein effect so that it does not slip out and that has been sutured back onto itself and a transcapitular wire has been kept temporarily to hold the reduction okay so this is the annular ligament reconstruction and fixation okay now the type 2 or the posterior dislocations are a little more trickier because your deformity here is completely reverse so in that you can see the radial head lying posterior and you can see the more time passes the radial head instead of being concave starts looking convex and even despite reduction sometimes there may be on pronosupination partial subluxation because the shape of the radial head match the uh, lower end of the humerus that is the capitulum so this is the method where an ulnar osteotomy has been done and the radial head has been reduced now what you can do is use a fixator to achieve your distraction so after you reduce the radial head manually for osteotomy you can use a small jest fixator and two pins open up a gap and then you put your plate in the reduced position so you can see here what, what i have put a transcapitular pin i have held a reduction then i have made the after the osteotomy has been distracted this is my stable position so i will contour the plate and fix it accordingly and once the fixation is done then i will pull the pin out and check after the pin is removed if i feel there is subluxation i can add the annular ligament reconstruction or sometimes i will leave the pin in for about 15 days to 3 weeks and then pull it out but don't leave the pin transcapitular pin for too long because it can cause stiffness and sometimes it can break if you allow motion so this is a bado 3 again i said a lateral dislocation neglected so this required a medial plate you can see this is a neglected bado so i had to put a plate on the medial side and an angulation was done on the medial side to pull this back into position and again temporary transfixation for 15 days to 3 weeks again fixator assistance you can see the head brought back in the angulation created then the contouring of the plate and then fixation and then the fixator comes out so this is a very useful trick i have found so that we can have your distraction and the gap in the bone always fills up so you don't have to worry so this is the example of a type 3 result and that healed pretty nicely over a period of time with good correction and good function so some problems are to be anticipated especially in neglected cases some loss of pronosupination has to be expected if you leave the transcapitular pin too long it can break if you do too early surgery or very high osteotomy there has been a few reports of having a cross union between the ulna and the radius which has caused synostosis and very often the radial head if it is long for out for too long it will be dysplastic and it may not be congruently seated but as long as it gives valgus stability it is still better than excising it or doing any kind of radial head replacement so this is an example where you can see this child was given conservative treatment and massage was done and the radial head remained out 
so this is what was done by the surgeon whoever tried to do the surgery and it ended up with a cross union okay this is an example where too early too aggressive surgery should not be attempted give it some time for the tissues to settle down maybe 3 to 6 months or if you are doing an osteotomy in fresh neglected cases do it below the proximal end so that there is the chances of cross union are reduced so that you don't end up with this kind of a complication myositis also is known in radial head dislocations and you should be wary of that okay so this is another paper by james v from singapore who has talked about open reduction with annular length ligament, ligament reconstruction with foram fascia and they said that chronicity of a missed montagia is 6 weeks to 2 years with a mean of 12 weeks and his series showed excellent results in 11 patient good in 3 poor in 1 and they, he used the one incision technique which is what i use proximal ulnar osteotomy again paper on that 28 patients were reviewed 6 year follow up 16 had ulnar osteotomy without ligament reconstruction and 12 had associated ligamentoplasty and both had equally good results so doing the ligamentoplasty is not required as long as your osteotomy is adequately distracted and attracted and on table there is good stability without redislocation so patients operated less than 1 year had better result the age of the patient did not have any correlation and people who had transcapitular pinning had arthritic changes with recurrence of dislocation and type 3 are the three cases of type 3 i had recurrence of dislocation so most of the bad o one neglected cases an isolated ulnar osteotomy will give good results especially if done within a year and associated ligamentoplasty is not very useful if it is a type 3 then you might need a transcapitular pin because redislocation rates are higher and external fixator assisted osteotomy we have already spoken about so sometimes you get an outlier that this is like i had a 13 year old boy who was left who had a left elbow pain with a deformity with stiffness and a five year neglect so this was the child with a deformity and a neglect and this was his type 3 fracture dislocation now again with adequate counseling we proceeded and we offered him reconstruction because valgus instability according to me otherwise is a bigger problem than losing pronosupination so what we did was again the same thing single approach posterior going through the ulnar osteotomy with a fixator pins in place adequate distraction when you distract it then i lever out you can see that that is the capitulum here and then with a small lever i bring back the head after debridement of the joint and you will not get the reduction till the osteotomy is completely displaced and distracted so gradually you can see i am teasing it out and gradually i am bringing the radial head back in and then once it is in you stabilize with a plate and then you check your stability with rotations this is his function after 8 weeks now this is reduced well he regained full flexion flexion block was gone extension deformity about 20 degree deformity remained this is at 12 weeks the stability you can see head has become concave but it is giving good valgus stability and over a period of time at 8 month follow up his deformity has reduced further and he got very good uh, functional range i can't i won't say full range but good functional range of motion so a step by step approach is important in delayed presentation early cases you do ulnar distraction osteotomy you may not need to reduce open reduce the radial head late cases additional open reduction and debridement reconstruction of annular ligament only if required transcapitular pin if it is unstable or type 3 so that concludes this talk and i'll be happy to answer any questions that you have Uh, sir uh, usually yeah. what's the decision between the ulna olecranon process to the osteotomy site sir so see normally if you follow all pallis principles any deformity should be corrected at the cora and the cora here 
if it is the radial head is dislocated the cora is going to be in the proximal ulna okay now the problem is doing a very proximal osteotomy may make it go intra articular or in the radial ulnar joint which may cause synostosis so you must make sure that osteotomy is away from that region and two screws at least should go into proximal fragment so typically coronoid process your first screw in the top is usually unicortical and the second screw i aim just below the coronoid so that it is bicortical and the osteotomy is just below that so as close to the cora as possible but away from the joint and at least one screw bicortical sir for the adults who come present at 30 35 years of age with uh, uh, dysplastic radial head and capitulum would you advise for uh, total elbow replacement or uh, to surgery sir so i'll give you a very simple answer first is i don't do adults so nobody with 35 years comes to me adult colleagues i see them doing something and let me tell you what my earlier experience is trauma is a very poor indication for any kind of placement it's a terrible indication because a young person with very high demand your elbow replacement will fail in no time elbow replacement is reserved for old low demand rheumatoid elbows trauma by itself is a very very bad indications for doing any kind of elbow replacement if you are asking about terrible triad or terrible pentad where you do ligament construction acutely and radial head replacement now that is a decision to do when you have a fracture dislocation of elbow for fresh trauma a neglected montagia is not an indication to do elbow replacement thank you sir sir that synostosis case how do you approach sir for that yeah so synostosis case i am doing one next week same radial neck fracture somebody had treated with k wires and now the child has synostosis so the treatment is again appropriate counseling that it can reform but wait till it becomes mature and then i am going to go with a posterior lateral approach and excise the synostosis and i am going to put fat graft in between to prevent reformation like we do a facial bar excision in a post traumatic synostosis success rates are better than congenital synostosis which is a birth defect with a completely mal rotated forearm where the interosseous membrane is also contracted so you will not get a good result in trying to restore motion for synostosis which is congenital but post traumatic you should try yes nitin sir ha huh. <laughs> Actually, I got two questions, but because of the discussion about the synostosis, I got I want to raise another question. Also. First question yeah. is uh, regarding the single uh, approach uh, for the um, late yeah. montage fractures. Do you do yeah. in supine position in wide approach, approach or it is a lateral position like a uh, supra? Yeah, lateral, lateral like yeah, like like you do for a TY elbow patient. I prefer to put in lateral position over a bolster. with a high tourniquet and my incision starts above the elbow joint on the triceps because i may need to harvest the triceps fascia and then i move down and i take the incision on the radial side i curve okay. it on the radial yeah, side avoiding the uh, uh, bursa and mm. the tip of olecranon otherwise they can get a painful scar there painful when they put scar. flex mm. their elbow and then you just dissect off the bone from the anconius and you will straight away go into the elbow joint which is the radio capitular joint normally you should see radial head there but you will not see anything because it has gone anterior yeah and uh, then because it is anterior you will see some ligament or broken or fibrotic uh, annular ligament remnant there you will need to do the osteotomy before you try to bring that back so what you do is you put the fixator pin first above and below so that there is something which with you can control the proximal fragment otherwise what happens you cut the bone and then you can't hold anything yes so you make a small put two k wires or threaded pins one in proximal ulna one distal then cut between them at your appropriate level and then distract and then slowly when you have created a gap 
put a small uh, either a dura dissector or a small blunt periosteum and tease that radial head which has gone in front and pull it back you will get it back slowly once it goes back okay then flex the elbow so that it is stabilized against the capitulum at about 90 if it is jumping in and out put a transfixing pin yes and then at the angulation distraction that you have achieved that reduction put your plate okay uh, one can one you screw. use lamina distractor yeah. or a lamina spreader yes yes yes, yes. Of, uh, you can you can of course but acute distraction in ulna not more than a centimeter because i have had cases where too much acute distraction can cause compartment so don't yes. don't do that you might have to then if you do that now do a fasciotomy also along the ulna side cut the fascia okay. because invariably the bleeding happens after you release tourniquet from tourniquet. the osteotomy and the forearm becomes really swollen second i'll give you a tip the only complications i have had so distraction are, are when a block has been given so don't let your anesthetist give the patient a block if you are doing ulna this montagia because pain is a very important indicator for you to know there is compartment if you yeah, take away the pain block. the hand gets yes, swollen yes. and then you can end up with vic yes yes uh now regarding the distraction do you look for the inferior radio uh, ulnar joint uh, no, disparity no, or parity no 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 nothing happens don't worry about that in a child's elbow inferior radio ulnar joint there are no great effects happening it is pliable enough for that to act, 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 accommodate that stretch see once the radial head comes back in the intrashus membrane is going to get stretched okay but it adjusts as long as your ulna is elongated to that level and it heals okay uh last question uh, yeah. uh we uh, we talked about that uh, radio ulnar synostosis iatrogenic yeah. okay yeah. so the chances of recurrence if you exercise the synostosis are, are uh, there no and there, there are there. Some, some doctors advise rotational osteotomy of the radio no so so what i was saying is that when you are doing a treatment of a synostosis which is post traumatic a post traumatic situation was essentially normal from birth to begin with and this cross union has happened as a result of exuberant callus or massage after a trauma situation like a myositis so okay. in those situation i will make the attempt to resect and restore range of motion because okay. i have a 50 to 60% chance of succeeding but a congenital radial nerve synostosis where there is malformation of the forearm with contracture of the intrashus membrane also since birth any oh. attempt at removing the synostosis doesn't work it reforms as well as you don't get that range so yeah. in that cases if you have bilateral pronated forearm if you have a pro bilateral pronated forearm like this where you can't eat and mm. there is back handedness jyota mm. itne Mm. then one hand you will do a derotation osteotomy mm. to allow him to eat but he will mm. not get pronation then then he will use the shoulder to pronate shoulder to pronate oh that yeah, is so easier. he will but but remember that shoulder has more internal rotation and less external yeah so you will always do a better job if you are going to do a supination correction rather than a pronation correction pronation correction so if i get a congenital radial ulnar synostosis which is bilateral with full pronation i will offer one side derotation osteotomy if it is in functional position i leave them alone they don't need anything yeah right okay shivananda thank you. thank you sir what is your experience of uh, synostosis in boyd's approach because uh, in the textbook they are described that boyd's approach is prone to get the synostosis what is your there experience there is no no the same that's what i'm saying your dissection in that region especially with additional trauma and the osteogenesis that is happening the blood clots and the leakage and the massage that is why it can happen i i have done most of my surgeries through a single incision you saw dr james wee's paper also it's not that it is very common but it can happen you should warn the family that see what i am trying to tell you is reconstruction of a montagia the essential indication is to prevent valgus instability it is yeah. not to restore pronosupination 
Yes. You have to warn the family that you might lose some pronosupination, but it is still worth it because in yes. the long run, valgus instability you cannot treat. Yes, thank you, okay. sir. Okay, Rohit. Kari, uh, sir, just to... one question. Actually, uh, uh, the case which you presented, uh, yeah, where you uh, type three bad or where you put a color K wire, or yeah. um, for that matter, any um, non type one. Uh, yeah. Bado, okay. uh, you still give a cast in uh, in uh, full flexion. Flexion. Still... Yes. See, when the radial head comes in front of the capitulum, putting it more than ninety buttresses it tightly against that and prevent okay. it from moving. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, ca ca yeah. cast in uh, full. Uh, yeah. Mean, not, full in... not 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 full. Not full. More than ninety. Maybe hundred. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sanjeev okay. Kumar, sir, uh, regarding that osteotomy types, transverse yeah. oblique and step cut. How do you yeah. choose that? Which one is ideal for that case? And uh, no, no. See, all is... all of, see, doctor, yeah. doctor uh, Raj Chakran has his own way of doing it. They do a Z osteotomy. Okay, yeah. everybody can develop his own osteotomy. Principle is angulation distraction. You do it in any which way, all of them work. Okay. It is not a question of you have to choose one of them. Whatever you are comfortable with, whatever you are trained with, whatever you can do easily, you do it. Okay. All of them have shown to give good results. That's why people are doing whatever they feel. If you look at literature, you will find many osteotomies. Okay. So, principle is get the radial head back in. If it is a younger child in less than one year and less than twelve years of age, your results will be better. More than that, your results are little unpredictable. Warn your family that you might lose pronosupination, but still it is worth reconstructing. Eighty percent of the times you will not need to do ulnar ligament reconstruction, the radial head ligament, and osteotomy, which is angulation distraction, should do the job. You can do it by like uh, Dr. Patil said with a laminar distractor is fine. I you I prefer to use a JES because it allows me freedom of putting the plate in between, and then I can pull out the pins so that it is held in distraction. And uh, be careful about blocks and compartments. Yes, sir. Sir, one more doubt, sir. Sir, for that yeah. uh, plastic deformance, alna with uh, radial head dislocation variety. Yeah. How can you yeah. treat that uh, variety, sir? Yeah. So that sometimes may be mistaken like a just an isolated radial head dislocation. Treatment is the same. You try to first reduce the radial head closed or open. Get the head back in. At the same time, if the alna does not correct or is obstructing your reduction, you have to break it. So you have to tell the family that you may end up doing an ulnar osteotomy. Putting the head back in is of utmost importance. If it comes closed, very good. If it doesn't come open, after open, if it is not stable without breaking the ulna, break the ulna mm -hmm. and angulate it. Yes, sir. Ulna osteotomy is in uh, upper middle third junction, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, Shivananda, you have a question? Oh, it's so, an earlier hand. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. You have a really great audience, very interactive. And uh, after a break, I hope to get back if Ashok wants to do one more session sometime after June now. Okay, so thanks very much for attending this. And the group will be still live. All the recordings are there. and. My, my my request to you is that whenever you put up your cases, no, put up a plan also. After all the teaching, if you are going to say, give me a plan, I am not going to do a plan because I am not seeing the patient. Exactly. You sir. are looking at the patient, whoever has put up a case, try to analyze using whatever we have spoken about and you put a plan, I can suggest whether it is to be modified or it's good. If there is a diagnostic dilemma, I will always help you out. There is never an issue with that. But uh, don't put up an X-ray and say, what should I do? That's not a good idea. Then what is the point of the fellowship? 
चलो गुड नाइट थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गुड नाइट थैंक यू